Welcome to Brushstrokes TV. I'm Julie Schrader and today I'd like to talk a little bit about materials. The first thing I'm going to show you is setting up your palette in watercolor and how to do that in the steps. So first I'd like to look a little bit at this color wheel right here and this color wheel shows you that different colors in a triad you've got the yellow and the red and the blue and then the in between the mixtures all around and this is how I really like to have my palette set up it uh, is more of a natural way to have your palette and then when you're actually mixing your colors in your palette you can look across the palette and get your complementary colors and your analogous colors the ones that are beside each other and it's an easier way to mix so I have um, these set up in a certain way on my Quiller travel palette and I'll show you how to put your paint in the wells so when you First, get your brand new palette. You open it up and it's a little intimidating. And so I usually start with my lighter colors and then that way I go from light to dark. And that's how I like to do that so that I don't get blues in my yellows and, and uh, make it end up being green. So this is uh, Windsor Yellow. It's a beautiful bright yellow, a nice light color that you can use for your lighter sunny subjects. And I squeeze out a fair amount in, in the well. And with the end of a small brush, I try to move it right to the very corners so that I get a flat surface. If I end up with little spaces in the corners, what will happen is once you uh, start to paint and you get some water in these wells, it will end up puddling in those little holes and get underneath your watercolor and then it, it will maybe loosen it up. So I don't like to waste any paint. I try to get this off here on the palette and I'll use that later. And now I'm ready for my next color. Okay, my next color I'm going to show you is quinacridone gold. And I like to place my quinacridone gold right alongside my Windsor yellow to the left. And it's a beautiful golden earth color that I love to use in landscapes. And it gives a nice earthy look to nice golden glow at times as well. It's a very beautiful color. It's actually a Daniel Smith color and I don't I don't believe that I've seen it in any other brand. I think it's unique to Daniel Smith. So I I mean it's not totally flat, but I try to flatten it out as much as I can and get all of the little pockets and places where water can hide out of there. My next color I'm going to do is this quinacridone burnt orange and this is this is also a wonderful earth tone that I use for mixing with Antwerp blue to get beautiful pine colors and it's also really nice when you mix it with some darker blues for some landscape rocks or ground cover type colors. This is also a Daniel Smith color. My next color is quinacridone rose and you can see I've got two of these here. This is an older tube that the top actually cracked so I just threw and this happens quite often See the top, the top cracked open here, so all you need to do to save your paint is throw a little masking tape over and make that air tight, and then you're good. 
So this is quinacridone rose. It's a, it's a beautiful, bright, rosy, pinky color that's wonderful for flowers or sunsets. And if you mix it with your Windsor yellow, you can get some beautiful orange, orange, peachy colors. So this one's a little more gooey. Some of the colors actually are more runny and they sort of flatten themselves out as you'll see with the Antwerp blue, which is my next color. Some of these here, you need to try to get all the air out from the bottom and smooth them out as much as you can. And I probably actually have enough with this one. I was going to, you know, if you have the end of a tube, you can squeeze that out and then use some more from another tube to add on if you need to. But make sure you at least fill your well about half full because if you, if you put less in there, you're going to end up at the bottom and then you'll have to refill it again. And so this will last a little while as long as you put about a halfway. So my Antwerp I like to put here. This, this space here is reserved for cobalt blue, which is more of a primary blue. This Antwerp blue is a darker color and it's, it's a very rich color. And if I leave this, it probably will just flatten itself right out. It's, it's a little more of a leaky color. And when you use it uh, in a wet and wet wash, it will move quite rapidly around on the paper. So it's more of a mover. So here I've, I've got five colors here. And this gives you a good idea of how to put your colors in and then what you want to make sure that you do is you let this set before you do an actual painting of a wet and wet. You want to make sure that you set your palette up and let it dry out a little bit. So it may take a few days to dry. Maybe if it's, if it's a really hot, arid place like Arizona, it'll take a day or two. But if, if it's rainy and it's moist, it may take up to a week or even two weeks to dry and you want it to harden before you actually mix any of, of your especially blues or greens into your yellows because if, if the green gets in down below the surface of the yellow you'll never get back to pure yellow so you let these harden and then once you're ready to paint your palette's going to look something like this and see these are these are hard to the touch and all we do is we spray a little bit of water in here or with a brush we can get a little bit of water in the well and it's very simple to get as much paint and in the intensity that you want it. When your paint is, is gooey right out of the tube it's, it's a little trickier to get exactly the strength that you need from your watercolor. Thank you for joining me as I set up this palette today and I hope that encourages you to go out and try it and have a good time with watercolor.